The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. As much as $6,000 in cash to spend any way you want. That's what the grand prize winner of Parquet Margarine's $50,000 Name My Song contest may get for naming Gildersleeve Song. More than 1,300 other prizes. Contest open to listeners in the United States, Canada, and Hawaii. Full details in our next announcement. The great Gildersleeve and this $50,000 prize contest are brought to you by the makers of Parquet Margarine. The margarine millions prefer because it tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, Summerfield's most eligible bachelor is in a gay mood tonight. He has a date with that pretty nurse, Miss Catherine Milford. There's a shine on his shoes, a press in his suit, and a song in his heart. Of course, he wrote the song himself. Familiar strain. Hmm. Quite a strain right there. <laughs> Doesn't sound quite right when I play it. Maybe I can get Marjorie to. Marjorie! Yes, Uncle? You know what would make my song sound a lot better? I do, Uncle. The Andrews sisters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Leroy, come on, Marjorie. Play it for me. All right. But I thought you had a date with Miss Melford. Well, I have a date at 8 o'clock. If there's anything I hate to do, it's wait around the hospital. Seems silly for a man to go in one of those places standing up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead and play, Marjorie. Yeah, I'll sing it with you. You, Leroy? Sure. Yes, yes. At your age, you never know if it'll come out bass or soprano. <laughs> yeah, I'm practically a quartet all by myself. <laughs> Hit it, Marge. There's an old familiar strain. That Bertie? Yes, sir. That Leroy's another dentist date. Yeah? She's kidding, Leroy. I just thought of a title for your song, Miss Gilsley. You did? Yes, sir. It came to me when I was washing the gravy boat. Yeah. Oh, what is it, Bertie? A wooing and canoeing. A wooing and canoeing? Well, oh, that's not bad, Bertie. I don't get it. Never mind. Everybody down at the lodge is trying to think of a title, but I got it. A wooing and canoeing. Well, I certainly appreciate your cooperation, Bertie. You gonna use my title, Mr. Gilbert? A little early to say. A lot of people are sending in titles that are pretty good. I knew I had a good title when I was washing that gravy boat. Well, you could have thought of a worse one, I think. <laughs> yes, sir. A wooing and canoeing. <laughs> it came to me just like that when I was washing the gravy boat. <laughs> You know how I thought of a wooing and canoeing, Miss Gilsey? Yes, Bertie. That's right. It came to me when I, I was watching, watching the, the gravy boat. I was wooing and canoeing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bertie never gives up. Come to think of it, I might take Catherine out to see the reservoir this evening. A wooing and canoeing. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Better get down to the hospital. <laughs> Hospitals. E. <laughs> Hmm. 
wonder where Catherine is. They said I'd find her here on the second floor. Well, at least it's more pleasant up here. Those people downstairs paying their bills look pretty sick. <laughs> Pager. Nurse Milford wanted in Gildersleeve's car. <laughs> well, I've been standing long enough. Guess I could sit on the radiator, unless the heat's on. I ought to put some chairs out in these halls. Rockmorton. Well, Catherine. I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. No, glad to wait for you. Then you won't mind waiting a little longer. Zeef. Dr. Spencer is performing an operation that I'd like to watch. But, Catherine, we have a date. Forgive me, won't you? It's always so hard to leave the hospital. You get so interested in what's going on. Well, that's all well and good, but you should get away from your work, Catherine. That's the way I do things out at the water department. No matter what's going on, when five o'clock comes, bing, bing, I force myself to leave. <laughs> yes, I know. But this is a sympathectomy. Simple hoop to me? Uh, it's an operation for high blood pressure. Well, if I have to wait around here much longer, Dr. Spencer can perform a double header. <laughs> oh, Throgmorton, I won't be long. You just make yourself comfortable. Comfortable? Standing out here? Oh, dear, I'm sorry. Come down the hall with me. I know just the place for you. Oh? Down this hall? Mm hmm. But Catherine, the arrow says maternity ward. Mm hmm. There are lots of magazines and easy chairs in here. Oh? There. This is the father's room. The father's room? Mm-hmm. Just make yourself at home. All right. Just relax. Won't be long. <laughs> Never thought I'd wait for a girl who wears white cotton stockings. <laughs> uh, might as well sit down. <sighs> Wonder who that fellow over in the corner is. Awfully pale. Needs a shave, too. Hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Is this your first? First? Oh, no, no. I'm just visiting here. I'm a bachelor. Bachelor? Yeah, I'm waiting for my date. <laughs> oh. My name's Johnson. Ralph Johnson. Yeah, glad to know you, Ralph. I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, city water commissioner. Oh, glad to meet you, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's good to have somebody to talk to. Yeah, I imagine it is. Yeah. This is my first. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here since five this afternoon. That long? Uh, you got a match? Match? Oh, oh yes. Here. Uh, I better light it for you. Thanks. No, 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 the other end. You're lighting the cork tip. Oh. <laughs> Want a magazine? No, thanks. I read all last year's magazines. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you don't know what a father goes through having a baby. Now, my boy, remember, this happens every day to hundreds of people. Yeah, but I can't stand this waiting. Just relax. It won't be long. Uh, I don't know why I can't be as lucky as a buddy of mine. He had a baby last night, and he was only here half an hour. Oh, well, don't get impatient, Ralph. Maybe your stork overshot the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but don't worry. He'll come back. Oh, gosh, I wonder what the baby will look like. I've been thinking a lot about that. Have you ever seen a new baby, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, I hadn't until I saw my buddies. He was pretty small. Oh? Yeah, only weighed nine pounds. <laughs> well, nine pounds isn't a bad start. Didn't have any hair. Just all red and wrinkled. <laughs> now, Ralph, when I was a baby, I didn't have any hair either. Look at me now. Hey, something must be going on. They keep ringing that bell. They keep ringing it, but nothing happens. Why don't they come out and tell me something? <clears throat> Better have another cigarette, Ralph. Here, I'll light it. Thanks. I think I'll have one, too. <laughs> I haven't smoked one of these things in years. What was that? That's my baby. Mr. Gildersleeve is here. Great, let's go out and see the little fellow. Yeah. Huh? Hey, nurse, wait, here I am. Hey, nurse, here we are. Hey, let me see it, let me see it. Let me get a look at it. But gentlemen, what's all the excitement? Well, that's my baby. Oh, are you Mr. Wilkins? Wilkins? No. Well, I didn't think so. His wife said he was a night watchman. <laughs> Awfully 
awfully sorry, Ralph. We'd better go back in and sit down. All right. Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Ralph? I wonder if I'm ever going to be a father. What do you mean? I wonder if something's gone wrong. No. Remember, Ralph, no news is good news. <laughs> well, that's what they say. Yeah. No news is good news. <laughs> <laughs> wonder if anything is wrong. Throckmorton. Oh, oh, hello, Catherine. It's going to be a long operation, so I decided not to wait. Oh, uh, Catherine and uh, Miss Milford, this is Ralph. When did you say your name was? Name? Oh, Johnson. Uh, Ralph Johnson. Yeah. He's expecting. Oh, well, isn't that wonderful? Good luck, Mr. Johnson. Thanks. I'll need it. Poor fellow. Well, Throckmorton, let's go. We still have most of the evening. Yes. Well, um... You were sweet to wait. I spend too much time at the hospital. I shouldn't become so interested in what's going on around here. Um, uh, Catherine. Yes? Um. What is it, Throckmorton? Why don't you run on home? I'll pick you up later. What? I can't leave Ralph here alone. Oh, Throckmorton. Catherine, please, go home and relax. It won't be long. <laughs> Cash prizes, $50,000 worth. As much as $6,000 in cash to the grand prize winner. More than 1,300 prizes in all in Parquet Margarine's great Name My Song contest. Each week for five weeks, Parquet Margarine is awarding four $1,000 first prizes, 20 $100 cash prizes, 50 $20 cash prizes, 200 $10 cash prizes. Yes, name Gildersleeve's song and you may win one of those prizes. And there's an additional grand prize, $5,000 for the best name of all. Now, you don't need to know music. Just think of a title for Gildersleeve's song. Send it with the red end flap of a package of Parquet Margarine to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Your dealer has an entry blank with full instructions and the words of Gildersleeve's song. Or a plain piece of paper will do. Be sure to include your own and your dealer's name and address. And write down that address, Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Entries in this week's contest must be postmarked before midnight this Saturday. So hurry. Imagine winning as much as $6,000 in cash. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. He came down to the hospital tonight to get his girlfriend, Nurse Catherine Milford. She wasn't quite ready to go, so she had him wait in the father's room. Now the nurse has gone home, but the water commissioner is still on duty. Have another cigarette, Ralph? No, thanks. Can't see for the smoke now. <laughs> I'll never go through this again. No, Ralph. This is my first and it's my last. <laughs> what time is it? Um, quarter of ten. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, you don't have to wait around here with me. You should be out with your nurse. I'll stay around a little longer. You need company. Oh, I'm all right. Oh, I think I'll sit down. You are sitting down. <laughs> well, how are we doing in here? Doctor, where have you been? What's happening? Any news, Doctor? Well, the Yankees won the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> my wife. What about my baby? Everything is fine. We just have to be a little patient. Patient? And don't worry, I've never lost a father yet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are you a relative? No, I'm Throckmorton P. Gillisley, the water commissioner. Oh? Something wrong with the pipes around here? <laughs> no, doctor. I'm just standing by. I'm a friend of Mr... What'd you say your name was? John. Yes. Oh, yes. Ralph Johnson. Doctor, are you sure everything's okay? Now, now, you look a little drawn, Johnson. Why don't you step out and get a sandwich and some black coffee? Well... You'll have a little time. See you later. I'd better be getting back now. Oh, what do you think, Mr. Gildersleeve? Shall we go? Well, I'm getting hungry, all right, but I don't know. We wouldn't want to be out when the baby comes. No, we wouldn't want that. I could use the phone here and have some sandwiches sent up. Yeah, there's a lunch counter right across the street. Well, I think I'll call Mr. Peavy. They want everything sanitary around the hospital. Might as well get the sandwiches from a drugstore. <laughs> you 
your telephone is ringing, Peter. Yes, I guess it is. Excuse me, Johnny. Certainly. I'll finish my celery phosphate and be on my way. Peavy's pharmacy. Uh, Peavy, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, this is Mr. Peavy. Yep. <laughs> I know that. Peavy, I want to order some sandwiches and coffee. Very well. I'd like two cheese and two chicken sandwiches. Well, it's a little late, Mr. Gildersleeve. How about four cheese sandwiches? What? Hey, chickens are going red. <laughs> <laughs> Peavy, make it four cheese. Can you send them over? I guess the messenger service is still open. Are you at home? No, I'm at the hospital, Peavy. The hospital? My, my. I'm in the father's room. Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> the father's room, Peavy. That's what I thought you said. Send them right over. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. You hear that, Judge? Hear what, Peavy? Mr. Gildersleeve's at the hospital in the father's room. What? Gildy couldn't be there. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. He said he was. I just saw a nurse in the hall, Ralph, but I didn't find out anything. Those nurses, they don't know what it is to be a father. messenger is. I don't know if I can eat anything or not. Oh, we have to keep our strength up, my boy. Yeah. Certainly is quiet around here. Well, here comes somebody. Oh, must be the boy with the sandwiches. Is this where I'll find Dr. Kildare? Oh, Judge Hooker. <laughs> I brought your sandwich to Kildare. Oh, well, thanks, Judge. What are you doing in the father's room? Giving birth to a new song? <laughs> <laughs> this is no time for foolishness, you old goat. I'm sorry, Gildy. Somebody waiting for a blessed event. What do people usually wait for in a maternity ward? Judge, this is Ralph Johnson. Judge Hooker, Ralph. How do you do, young man? Glad to know you, Judge. I take it you're the father to be. I hope so. Here, Ralph. Have a sandwich. Oh, thanks. Wait a minute. Before you bite, take the paper off. Oh. <laughs> Your young friend seems a little nervous, Gildy. That's precisely why I'm seeing him through this, Judge. Tell me, young man, is this your first? Yeah. Now, Judge, don't talk about it. You just worry him. Sometimes talking about it helps, Gildy. Now, take my operation. Oh, my goodness. Please, Judge. Very well. What are you hoping for, Mr. Johnson, boy or girl? Well... We don't care which it is, so long as it gets here. Yeah. That's right, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'd settle for anything. Gosh, it's been a long time since that doctor was in. Hi, fellas. Well, if it isn't Mr. Munson. Floyd. Is he a doctor? Hardly. He's a barber. <laughs> Floyd, what are you doing here? Me? Well, I dropped in at the Peeves to pick up some aspirin. He told me it was over here. Hey, what's going on, Commish? Well, nothing yet. Ralph here is expecting a baby. No kidding. Ralph, meet Floyd Munson. Hello, Mr. Munson. Hi, Ralph. Care for an aspirin? Yeah. Gosh, I'll take two. I need something. Ralph's been waiting over five hours. It's his first flight. Yeah? What's that, triplets? <laughs> no, Floyd. In hospitals, those bells ring all the time. I remember when I had my operation... Judge, please. Hey, look, here comes the peeve. Peavy, too? Oh, for, this place is beginning to look like the Elks Club. Come in, Peavy. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. Peavy, what are you doing here? Well, I might ask you the same, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> well, we're expecting. I mean, Ralph is. Over there in the corner. Shh. He's asleep. Well, I'll be done. Poor fellow. Well, he's had a hard night. And so have I. Hey, how long can a deal like this go on, Commish? Well, these things take time, Floyd. Of course, we haven't had any news for quite a while. There's a nurse going down the hall. Why don't you ask her about it, Commissioner? I think I will. Nurse! Oop. Nurse! Yes? Nurse, what about the Johnson baby? The Johnson baby? I've been waiting here since 8 o'clock. Nothing has happened. Well, when the baby arrives, I'm sure you'll be the first to know, Mr. Johnson. What? He ain't Mr. Johnson. Oh, then you're Mr. Johnson. No, I'm Munson, the barber. I see. Oh, I should have known who the father is all the time. The worried-looking man. Me? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> hmm. What time? 
time is it, Judge? Well, it's uh, one minute before midnight. My, my. Hey, there goes the doctor. Doctor, any word? Not yet. <laughs> Waking Ralph, did we? Nah, he's still sleeping. At least he ain't worrying the way we are. Floyd, there's no reason for you fellows to be worrying about anything. Ralph and I can handle this. Why don't you, the judge and the peavy, go home? Gildy, since we've stayed this long, I, for one, would like to stay a little longer. You ought to go home, Judge. You'll fall asleep on the bench tomorrow. Now, Gildy, we may hear glad tidings at any moment. Well, perhaps I should call Mrs. Peavy before she calls the Bureau of Missing Persons. <laughs> Peavy, there's absolutely nothing you can do here. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, you know the Hippocratic Oath. I may be just a pharmacist, but I don't leave until the baby comes. I'm staying, too. I ain't no hypocrite, either. <laughs> all right, we'll all stay. Four o'clock. Well, at least poor Ralph is still sleeping. He's smiling now. Probably dreaming the baby's already here. He's twin. <laughs> I think I'll toss my coat over him. Oh. I'm a little stiff. Judge, you got any affidavits with you? Not just now, Floyd. Why? The wife will never believe I stayed up until 4 a.m. with a sick friend. <laughs> I've been here longer than any of you. I've been here eight hours. Peavy, is it customary for these events to take so long? Well, that all depends. I know everything's going to be all right. Don't you, Peavy? Oh, yeah. Don't you feel that way, Jack? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I'm confident of the outcome. Aren't you, Floyd? Sure, it's a breeze. Ain't it, Kamish? <laughs> the sun is lovely this morning. 8.30. <sighs> yes, Marjorie and little Leroy are having their breakfast now. They've been serving it here since 6 o'clock. We should have snagged one of them trays as they went by. <laughs> hey, here comes another one. Floyd. <laughs> I'm only kidding, Commish. Uh, yes. <laughs> Floyd, it's almost time for you to open the barber shop. Uh-uh, let the customers wait. Little Floyd your Munson ain't gonna walk out on a nothing-to-nothing ball game. <laughs> There goes the doctor again, Gildy. Oh? Gee, we ain't seen him for three hours. Hey, doctor! Doctor! Apparently, he didn't hear you. Yeah, just didn't want to hear me. Wonder if they're trying to keep something from us. Don't look good to me, Commish. Seems like they could tell us something. All right, George, I've got a good notion to go out after that doctor and find out. Yeah, let's get this show on the road. Yeah. <laughs> well, good morning. Catherine! Rockmorton, have you been here all night? Well... I see you have. <laughs> Miss Milford, you know these gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Milford. Catherine, they won't tell us a thing about Ralph Johnson's baby. Where is Mr. Johnson? He's over there asleep. Oh. Come on, guys, let's find that doctor. Yes, I think we have a right to talk to him. I'll go knock on the door. Yeah, make them talk. Uh, no, 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 gentlemen, just a moment. What? Uh, you, you've all been dears to wait up with his father, but you've lost sleep and your nerves are on Well, I think Let we Let me are... go across the hall and see if I can bring back some news. Would huh? you, Catherine? Well, I don't think it will be necessary. Is this what you gentlemen have been waiting for? Well, the baby. Isn't it cute? Let me see it. Don't shove, Judge. It, it's a Johnson, all right. It says so on the beads. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. You hear that, Catherine? It's a cigar. Have a boy. I mean... <laughs> somebody wake up Ralph. He should have a cigar, too. <laughs> you know, Throckmorton, I think you'd make a wonderful father. Me? No, sir. I'll never go through this again. <laughs> Fifty. 
$50,000 in cash prizes. As much as a total of $6,000 to the grand prize winner. That's the big reason you should sit down right now and think of a name for Gildersleeve's new song. You'll hear it again in a minute. Send your title together with the red end flap of a package of Parquet Margarine to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Just think, a word or one simple phrase may be worth $6,000 to you in cash. But hurry, entries for this week's contest must be postmarked before midnight this Saturday. Open to listeners everywhere in the United States, Canada, and Hawaii. <laughs> Don't forget, folks, you can get a six-inch vinyl plastic recording of my song for only 25 cents and the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine. You don't need the record to enter the contest, but it might inspire a prize-winning idea. Send your quarter in the flap to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Same address as the contest. And now that Leroy isn't around with his bass soprano, maybe you'd like to hear how the song sounds on the record. Let's try the second chorus. In my reverie, it seems a summer moonbeam or fields that wander on and on to where a lane that we call ours hid among the flowers and welcome cooling showers before the dawn. There's a lilac trellis gate where each night we'd wait to breathe the fragrance in the air. And so wherever I may roam, my thoughts will return to home For I know that love and you are there Gosh, Unc, I thought it sounded better with me in it Leroy, good night, folks <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Want to put magic in leftover meals? Then have plenty of Kraft prepared mustard on hand. Mustard makes hidden flavors pop right out of leftover meats, adds new life to salad or egg dishes. You can get two kinds of Kraft prepared mustard, you know. Salad mustard, mild, delicately spiced, or Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. You are tuned for the stars.